so this video is a book review of The House of Beaufort, The Bastard Line That Captured the Crown by Nathan M. Inn. I requested it from the publisher, which is Amberly, so thank you very much for sending it to me. In order to celebrate the release of this book, Amberly Publishing are actually doing a whole host of different things online. So I'll leave their website in the description bar below so you can go and check out all the different things that they've been doing recently to celebrate this publication. Now you might be wondering, why would I want this book? Why did I request it? Well, quite simply, the Tudors. As you know, if you've been watching my channel for a little while, my love of history began with the Tudors and I think a lot of people's do as well. It's, it's a very dramatised area of history. And I'm now at the stage where I'm reading things not necessarily for information but I'm reading things um, to get that his historian's perspective um, or I'm actually writing a few bits and bobs myself now. But there are certain areas of the Tudor period where I do still want to explore. I want to explore certain individuals of that period, but I also want to explore before that period and the parents of that period, if you will. And there was one person in particular that I did want to discover a bit more about, and her name was Margaret Bayford. Get it? Uh -huh. But not just her, I wanted to learn about her family, because the Bayford family line are, um, are, I don't want to say it, but they're a bastard line who's ended up with the crown and creating probably the most famous monarchy in British history. The Tudor period is huge, um, but Henry VII's blood is Beaufort blood. Um, obviously it's Tudor blood as well, but there is Beaufort blood in here. Um, and I, I think it's fascinating to learn about where his origin story comes from. So I really wanted to, almost it's a bit like a prequel. Think of it like that. So that's why I wanted it. I learned, wanted to learn more about Margaret herself, but also where she came from and her family because I've always known they've always been extremely close to the throne but I didn't really know that much else so that's why I wanted this book and I'm so glad that I've read it because I really enjoyed it. So this book starts with all the ordinary things but it also has this family tree which I think is super helpful and it shows you where they've come from in regards to royalty and that they stem from Edward III and they whittle all the way down to Henry the Seventh, so they come from royalty and then feature back into royalty. As well as that, this book has the most clear and concise writing, it also has the most clear and concise chapters. You can tell that Nathan has had to go through these chapters again and again and completely take stuff out because there is no waffle in this book whatsoever. It's really nice to read a non-fiction book about a family, which should be, you know, a, probably about 500, 600 page book if there was all that waffling, but he's just taken it out and it's just the bare bones of the family that you really need to learn about. And he's wrote enough so that you learn, but he hasn't written too much to either bore you or so that you don't want to explore some of the people, I want to say characters in there because they are like characters, some of the um, people in, in this family um, so you can go and explore them further. And there are certain women in this family that I really want to explore further. I really want to explore Catherine, I'm going to really butcher her name, Catherine Swineford. i am probably got that wrong. I want to explore her further. I want to explore Margaret Bayford further. There's plenty of people that I found absolutely fascinating and it set my ball rolling in a whole new area now of this medieval history. So I love the writing, I love the chapters and as usual in these full length reviews I'm actually going to read you a little bit from the book so you get used to the writing style and the overall feel of it. Now the extract that I'm actually going to read from is actually the last paragraph of the book. Now it's no real spoilers here but it's just how Nathan sums this bit up. He it's like he's summing up the whole book, I think it's brilliant. Shortly after the catastrophe at Tewkesbury, which is where there was a battle, however, a small vessel left Tenby Harbour in southwest Wales, having evaded all Yorkist attempts at capture. Aboard were Jasper Tudor and his 14-year-old nephew, Henry Tudor, the son of Margaret Beaufort. Fourteen years later, the Tudors returned to Wales at the head of an army that included Henry's cousin, Charles Somerset, the illegitimate son of Henry Beaufort, the second duke, killed at Hexham in 1464. Although not both by name, the pair were both by blood, and at Bosworth Field on the 22nd of August 1485, the portcullis and Yale standards once again fluttered proudly in the English breeze. Doesn't that extract just make you want to learn more about this family? Oh. And of course we finish there because that's when Henry VII and his family line begin. So would I recommend this book? Uh, yes. <laughs> I would recommend this book to plenty of different people. 
I'd recommend this book to people interested in medieval history, people who are interested in British history in general, people who are interested in Tudor history, people who are interested in um, dramatics. If you're one of these people that kind of think, oh, I should read history, but I don't really know where to begin, but you like watching, I don't know, soap dramas on TV or just generally dramas on, on the television, then you'll really like this because this is just one big family drama. There's always something going on, there's always someone moaning about someone else or trying to be better than someone else. It's just fantastic. And it's one of these books that because the chapters are so small you think, oh I'll just read one more, I'll just read one more, and before you know it you've read the whole book and you just need to learn more about particular individuals. So what can I say about this book other than I think it's brilliant and it's a book that people really need to read if you say that you're a lover of the Tudor period because you've got to know where the origins of the Tudors come from and to do that you need to learn about this family. Do you know what it was generally really nice as well to read a history book which wasn't on the history of a royal family, it was a history of a family that although they have royal connections they weren't you know sat on the throne continuously and it's it's always that you know fighting to get higher or trying to seep into the limelight, it's lots of different aspects of them and because it's one family of course there's family dramas and um, emotions just get so so high and it, it was brilliant, it's just one big family drama and at times one big family mess. <laughs> so that's it for this review of The House of Beaufort, I hope you've really enjoyed this video. If you want to get your hands on a copy of course as usual it'll be linked in the description down below, just click on the link and it'll take you straight to the book depository. In the comment section below please let me know if you've already got your hands on this book, if so do you love it as much as I did, if you haven't got your hands on it is it now sat on your wish list, do you want to learn more about the Beaufort family. So that's it for this video, take care and I shall see you soon for the next one, bye for now!